All right, so let's begin with the first page of your handout. And at the top of the page, you'll see a sentence that reads just like on the PowerPoint. So you should plan to take all the ESL courses that you tested into and the ESL courses that follow it. Then on that page, you're going to see three columns. The first column, those are the required classes. Required means that you must take them. In the second column, there are optional classes. And in the third column, there are other classes you can take. So you'll see there that for ESL, when you're in level one, you can only take ESL. You cannot take any other class. But in level two, you can begin to take a math class. You can take OIM 101 and OIM 100, CIT 101. Those are three other courses you can take if you want to. There's a pronunciation course in the optional column. You can take it in level one, level two, or level three. But you don't have to take that one, only if you want to. And there are also optional grammar courses in level two and three. This course, CIT 101, if you don't know anything about computers, this might be a good course for you to take. OIM 100, if you only type with two fingers, this would be a good course to take. And then finally, OIM 101 is good for uh, typing in Microsoft. So those are the three courses you can think about taking, and you can take them in level two and three, but not level one. If you look on page two of the handout, you will see different kinds of ESL courses. And the first kind, we call them standalone, simply because it's one course by itself. Now, we have four different kinds of courses at Bunker Hill. One of them is not better than the other. You can see the advantages and disadvantages on your handout. The standalone courses have a convenient schedule. And we have a lot of students who like to have different teachers so they can see a different teaching style. And they like to have different classmates in every class. Those are the advantages. The disadvantages might be if you take four standalone courses, they might be a little confusing. Maybe yes, maybe not. But you have different homework assignments in each class, different professors. So that might be confusing. Um, and the other thing that might be confusing about four standalone courses is that you'll be reading different books. You might get the homework confused, you know, which homework is for Tuesday, which homework is for Monday. So that's one kind of course. The second kind, we call them paired. Uh, paired courses means you have to take two courses together. You cannot separate them. The disadvantages might be, hey, you prefer to have different teachers. You like to learn from different teaching styles. And the advantages might be, I have one teacher for two classes, same classmates for two classes, a little less confusing. Three, we have something that's called integrated and theme-based. So the professors who teach these courses, they put two courses together, and for the whole semester, they teach the same theme, same ideas. So you will see some theme-based courses in history, literature, and so on. But again, these courses, you cannot separate them. You have to take them together. And they have advantages and uh, disadvantages as well. And the last kind, of course, we have is called the learning community cluster. I think these are the most confusing to understand. So I will not say too much about them now, but when we work with you one-on-one, -on -one, we will. On the third page, you should have the exemption policy. This is the first time we have put the policy on a piece of paper, so you can read it, your professors can read it, and everybody should understand it pretty well. But this explains what you have to do to be exempt from one of the ESL courses. Then on the next page, you're going to see some information about the math policy. You have to take a math test before you take a math course. You can prepare for it. The preparation is not going to make your score much, much higher, but you will see what kinds of questions are on the test. So there's a website on that page. You can go to that website and find different sample questions. You can also go to room B118, which is the assessment center, and they will give you a handout with different websites. If you have a high level of math from your native country, you might want to study the vocabulary because on the test, you're going to have word problems. Then finally, ESL courses and financial aid. The federal government will give you 90 credits of financial aid to complete an associate's degree program. Most associate degree programs have 60 credits. 
60, 62, 63, 64. And then you can use 30 more credits to finish that program. When we look at the schedule with you, you will not see a professor's name next to every class. But you will see TBA. TBA means to be announced. So right now, Bunker Hill does not know who that teacher is. But if you go on the internet, if you go on the web advisor, as soon as a professor is hired, that person's name is written in the schedule. I probably shouldn't do this, but I'm going to do it anyway, okay? There's a website. It's called Rate My Professor. If I'm your professor, you can go to this website and you can write, Mr. Massaro is a waste of time. Don't bother taking his class. And then the other students can read it. Now, are you going to believe everything you read? No. Good. Good. Because don't forget, the students are writing these evaluations. All right? All of you should have an ESL advisor. If you look on your computer printout with the schedule, your advisor's name should be at the top. But you can also look in your profile and your web advisor. Your advisor might be one of us, one of the full-time professors here, or it could be one of the professionals who works in B118. Uh, you can also go to LifeMap. LifeMap is upstairs, room E235. It looks like a hotel, and they can also help you to find this information. You should also know what your program is. Sometimes you need time to think about what program you want to major in. So if you're interested in two majors, then you should look at both programs and identify the courses that you can use for both programs and take those courses first. That gives you more time. You can change your program because try, right now if your program is general concentration and you want to change it to radiology or nursing, then you have to do that with the program change form. And you can do that. You can see what you have to do on that page. So I think we are ready to work with you one-on-one. -on -one. Let's go.